today I want to talk about some negotiation skills that we as dispatchers must know, but some of these points can be applied to other negotiation instances as well. So let's start. First negotiation point that I want to talk about is having options and no fear of losing. What having options means is that you are out there looking for loads as a dispatcher, but there are few loads that you're calling and that's the way you should sound when you call brokers or the customers. So when you see about 10 loads that you could possibly book for this one driver, you should reflect that in your voice. You don't have to say it to the broker. For example, you see 10 postings or seven or eight of them that you will possibly call and you start with the first one that you like or you go in the order, you don't have to necessarily tell the broker that you're going to be calling the other ones, but they can for sure sense it in your voice. When you sound desperate and this is the only load, then they're going to sense that, okay? And that's normal. But when you see other loads and then you just go quickly through the, all the checkpoints and you ask them about everything and they tell you and you can't agree on the price, Having in mind that you have other options gives you more leverage for negotiation. You can tell them, hey, you know, if you change your mind, here's my phone number or if something else changes, you can call me back. Second point is, and this has been debated a lot, some people say it's better to make a first offer and some people say, well, no, 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 it's better for them to give you the first offer. I say both. It depends on the situation. In our cases, we are dispatchers, and for us, it's really nice to know how much the broker has in that load and how much they're going to be offering us, and that's a good starting point for us. If they ask us, hey, what do you need, then you may tell them a low price that they're going to wait for, and they're going to happily give you that load for your low price, but if you go way above what they have, then they're going to get uh, offended and they're just going to say, hey, you know, this is not going to work. Have a nice day. So what's the best way to do if you're a dispatcher? Well, when you see a load posted, if you see a price, then they already made you an offer and you probably know that this is the price that they're going to uh, stick around. OK, sometimes they may go more, but usually it's around that price point. But if they leave that price uh, field empty, then it means they're open to negotiation. They might have a price in mind, but they want you to give them an offer and always shoot high. If you absolutely have to have $3 per mile, shoot for four, shoot for five. It doesn't really matter in our business whoever makes the first offer. Usually the brokers will tell you what they have uh, in the first place. But uh, if the broker is hesitating and they ask you to give them a price, you have no choice. You know, you may pressure them to tell them, hey, you know, what do you usually move it for? Uh, what's your history behind this? How much would you like to have to kind of test the waters? But at the end, it really doesn't matter. You know what you want. You know what you need and when you're, what your owner operator needs to tell them uh, that you need uh, uh, $1,000 when they only have 500 it's not going to do much. Um, so they're just waiting for someone else, okay? So if you're about to, off to make them the offer first, at least know what you need. Quickly, while you're on the hold, you do your miles on your computer, you do your deadhead miles, you do some calculations, and you know if you're going to ask them for a thousand dollars that that's going to be enough for you or your driver but don't do one thousand dollars do more uh, do 14 do 12 do 1500 whatever you think that uh, is not going to offend them and we'll talk about that later uh, but be prepared for that and if they ask you for to make that first offer it doesn't really matter you know as long as you know what you have to make then it's okay Either, either way, you do it. When they tell you their price first, it's always good to flinch, maybe uh, make a sound, make something like, ah, you know, oh man, something like that, or even make a pause, or just wait for a few seconds to create the tension on their side. Now they're like, okay, well, 
Uh, are they going to take it? Uh, can they do it? Do they have to uh, do additional calculations? Do they have to call someone, maybe call the driver? So if you make that sound like, oh, man, oh, well, oh, that's too bad. Wow, something like that. Then you are lifting yourself up above their rig because, you know, it kind of tells them, hey, you know, what are you talking about? This is not what the rate is today. This is not what these market rates are. This is not nowhere enough to how much I need for this load. So you're kind of sending that message in a nice way. And you don't have to, you know, make a sound and do something like that. A pause is just enough to get their attention, okay? And this tells them uh, that you know what you're doing. You, you're doing your calculations and uh, you are uh, preparing for a counter offer. I understand during any of these, if we have bad market times and if we don't have enough time to speak on the phone because uh, the time is flying and they are getting like 20 phone calls in a minute, that's different, okay? Uh, this, uh, you know, you can sense when the broker is relaxed, when they have time to talk, or if it's like a small operations, uh, if, if it's a big operations with like five brokers, everyone is over there on the phone and the uh, phones are ringing, then uh, different rules apply for that. But we are talking about normal environment here. Next point is ask if that's the best they can do. Ask them, is this the most you can do? Is this your top dollar? Can you do more? Do you have any flexibility on your rate? Do you have more wiggle room on your rate? And just uh, asking that question is going to tell them that uh, you will need more. And now you're testing them what they're going to say. Well, they might say, well, you know, I got to talk to my boss. I got to talk to the customer. I might have some wiggle room, you know, or they might say, no, this is what we are uh, moving it for. My boss doesn't let me uh, do anything more and then you know that this conversation is over next point is always start with no when they call you or if you call them and they offer your load uh, just tell them no i don't mean no as in no i don't want the load but no this will not work and usually it's about the rate uh, most of these negotiations uh, will come down to the rate um, if the appointments are okay for the pickup and delivery, if the weight is okay, if uh, the driver can make it in, in that amount of time, then all it comes to is the rate. If uh, everything else checks out, then the money is the biggest thing. If they give you a load that's 600 miles and it's a three-day transit time, then you know it's out of the question, no matter how much money they give you, unless it's some uh, kind of big crazy money but that rarely happens okay so it's usually always down to the money but if they tell you the rate i'm paying one thousand dollars for this then you tell them no let me see what i need and then you do your calculations you call whoever you need to go call if it's your boss your colleague or a driver and then ask them what they need and like we always said ask for more but don't agree on a rate ever because if they give you a certain rate that usually means that they can do more unless it's some kind of special circumstance uh, if you see the market rates for that load is uh 700 dollars and they give you 1000 that's different okay but if the normal market rates are 1000 dollars and other brokers are giving the same money and you know there are loads out there on on load boards always say no always ask for more next point is never take the responsibility for the no answer if it really comes down to no at the end and uh, you guys couldn't make a deal something is uh, not clicking uh, with you guys and like we said it's usually the rate never take responsibility and say hey no i don't want this load i am not gonna do it this is ridiculous always uh, blame someone else you know if you have a driver that doesn't want that load just say hey you know my driver really doesn't want this load and because of it such and such and then you you're pushing away that guilt uh, from you and that leaves uh, open doors for you know next time when you guys uh, talk then they're not going to be like hey you know this guy Ennis uh, he doesn't want to work with me he's uh, you know very difficult to work with and last time he said no I don't want to do it 
But if you say it's my driver or if it's my boss, then you're blaming it on someone else and you're leaving that door open uh, for next time they want to work with you. Next point is try to go into their perspective, into their head. Uh, try to picture yourself as a broker. You have a customer or a boss who gave you a load to cover and they gave you certain limits to uh, do the load as far as the money goes and you can't go over that. And now here's you on the other side of the phone line and you're asking for more and you're giving them tough times, okay? So just try to uh, go into their perspective and see how they think. And then from what they are telling you, uh, you can usually say that, you know, if it's the truth or not. But if they're telling you, uh, we don't have more than that. This is what our customer is paying. I'm only making $50 or $25 or something. And, you know, you don't want to take all their money. But, you know, if the market rates are much bigger than what they're offering you, hey, you know, uh, it's all about money and we have to make money. And I don't want to take your less dollar or even, uh, you know, have you be a loss. But I am sure that, you know, you will uh, recover that on your next load or on your next 10 loads. So you may lose on this load, but then you tell them what you bring to the deal. And we'll talk about that soon. And then uh, hopefully they can give you uh, all their money uh, without you feeling guilty and without them uh, feeling remorse. But try to see, uh, try to go into their head, into their perspective, and see uh, why they cannot give you that load for that much money. Next negotiation tactic is always ask for more. No matter how much they give you, always, always, always ask for more. Unless the times are really tough, uh, the loads are flying off the board, you don't have time to negotiate, and this is the only load you're looking, it's really important that you book this load for this driver. Unless something like that is going on, always ask for more, and it will add up. If you start high, you ask for, um, even if it's a good rate, you ask for, let's say, two or 300 more, and you know they say no, and then you ask for 150. Even if you give you 25 dollars uh, for every load you book, that's a lot of money. It adds up uh, during the whole year. Just do your math, do your numbers, and then ask uh, yourself how many loads you booked in a certain period of time, in a week or month or a year, and then uh, multiply it by potential 25 dollars. But I hope it's going to be much, much more that you can get out of them. Uh, but even if it's 25 dollars. It adds up. It's a lot of money. So always, always ask for more. You have nothing to lose. Ask politely. Uh, explain why you're asking for more. And we'll talk about that at the end of this tutorial. If you ask for more, most likely they'll give you what you need. Uh, let's say uh, the load is $1,000 and you really want to have $1,300. You're not going to ask for $1,300 because they're not going to give you 1300 That's how negotiation works. Uh, you're most likely uh, going to find yourselves in the middle, maybe around 11 or 1200 but they're not going to give you uh, 1300 you know, s s right away. If you ask for 16 or 15 then you uh, will find yourself in the middle around 13 uh, but you all, that's why you always ask for two or $300 uh, dollars more if the load is $1,000, if the load is $2,000, you even ask for more. So there is a, a certain percentage, I think, that you always ask, have to ask for more. And that'd be like uh, around like 20% uh, percent, uh, more than uh, what you actually need. Next point is before the negotiation starts, always know your lowest point. It would be perfect if you could uh, do the miles uh, talk to the driver before you call the load or even if you're uh, waiting for the broker to answer like with two phones. Uh, but you have to have your minimum price in your head. You have to have your asking price in the head. You have to have your your uh, ideal price in the head and you have to have your minimum price in the head every time. So for example, there is a load and it would be really good if this load was paying 1500 so you are going to ask for 18 or maybe 2000 but 14 is the absolute lowest okay know that so when they tell you 14 
Just don't say right away, yes, ask for 2000 and see what you're going to do. But have the minimum price in your head, the ideal price, and always be ready to shoot 20% higher okay, than your ideal price. Next point is make it fair to everyone. Make it fair for yourself, for your driver, and for the broker as well. Because if uh, everyone is not pleased, there is a potential that uh, something is going to go bad. Okay, If you're not pleased with the deal, the minute you see a better load, you might uh, be tempted to book that other load and cancel this one. If the driver doesn't like the load and you push them into it uh, after a couple of hours or maybe like on the day of loading, they might call you and say, hey, you know, I really don't like that load. Or if they come to the pickup and something is wrong, they have to wait, then they're going to be really mad because they didn't want the load in the first place. But if the broker does not like uh, the rate that you were getting out of them, you know, you negotiated using this uh, tutorial or your own skills out of them and they didn't like it. But at that moment, uh, they uh, felt like they had to give it to you because, you know, they thought maybe no one else will take the load. But the minute someone else calls them about the load and gives them a better uh, offer or ask them if they have another load or if the boss is angry with them, they're going to cancel that load on you. Or even if you do the load, everything goes well, uh, next time broker calls you or they see your name, uh, they might not uh, want to work with you. They uh, ma might not feel comfortable working with you. So you got to make sure it's fair for everyone. You know, if they give you, uh, you know, you have to decide for yourself if you're going to take the last money, if, if they're going to make them lose money, if you really want to do that load. Uh, because if you see other loads being posted and they're, you're, you're getting a lot of money out of them because, you know, you keep pushing them and pushing them and the driver asking for more. Why make someone feel bad about the load if you have more options, you know, like similar options, you know, with a broker that has potentially more money in their load, in another load that they can give you uh, and and the, the transaction at the end uh, comes out to be fair for everyone. So try to make it uh, fair for everyone. It's a good long-term uh, business uh, tactic. Next point here is never negotiate with yourself. Uh, that means you have to be uh, ready to offer them a rate when you call, uh, like we said before. But if during the conversation with, with uh, the customer or with the broker, uh, you start negotiating with yourself like, hey, you know, maybe I can go lower or maybe uh, I, I shouldn't have said it, I should have done, you know, don't don't, don't ever do that. Then you're just going to make it complicated for you and for them. You're going to sound silly and uh, insecure. You're not going to sound professional. Uh, you're going to sound like an amateur. OK, so you don't want to do that. If you tell them a price, stick with it and that's it. Not every load is going to going to be perfect that you book. Everyone makes mistakes, uh, but at the end, it's better to sound sure, uh, even for yourself, you know, for your self-worthiness. And at the end of the day, when you analyze your day, then uh, just stick with uh, whatever you decided to do first. But that's why you have to be prepared and tell them uh, what you will need out of that load. So at the end, you're not negotiating uh, with yourself. You're not having second thoughts. Next one is uh, never accept the first offer. And we said that before, but this is more like, a, hey, you know, they call you and they say, hey, you know, I have this load and uh, it's this and that and it sounds really good. And you tell them, OK, well, let's do it. Uh, if they call you, if they call you and they give you an offer, that means they usually have more money and uh, you should be able to negotiate more money uh, unless this is a friend of yours so someone you worked uh, with before and they give you a lot of these loads and they respect you respect them that's different but if if someone that you don't know or you don't work a lot with gives you an offer first never accept it because if someone is giving you something first and they come to you even in in real life not just in dispatching uh, like uh, something else you're doing and they're coming to you and tell you hey i have uh, this product i'm selling it for this much if they come to you that means they can uh, give you a better deal always if you go to them and ask them how much is that is that for sale then they feel like oh well you know, this guy really needs it 
and uh, I'm I'm just gonna go much much higher than it's worth and then give them that price but if they come to you um, they can probably give you a much better deal next negotiation tactic is uh, listen more and talk less listen to all the little details that they are giving you i know we are always trying to multitask we're always busy and you know we might be tired and we don't know it happens to me a lot but it's a good practice uh, to just uh, listen uh, carefully, maybe even write down what they're saying, all the specifics, and then at the end uh, you give them your rate or the reason why their rate does not work, okay? So if you talk a lot, then you're going to uh, lose yourself, you're going to uh, make a mistake, you're going to say something that you shouldn't have, and uh, it's just better if, if you're straight to the point, just listen to them, listen, and they're going to uh, like that, you know, that you're not interrupting them, that you're listening to them, and that, that you respect the process, okay? So, uh, again, uh, talk less, but, you know, go to straight to the point and give them the higher rate than what you actually want. Next one is never give anyone a free gift. If you give someone a free gift, now, this can be, uh, you might think this has nothing to do with dispatching, and we'll have a few points at the end uh, that really don't have anything with dispatching. I just wanted to throw them in. But here, you know, you can't give someone a free gift in dispatching because in our negotiation process, it's pretty much straightforward. We'll take the load for this money or we won't, and that's it, okay? There is no additional concessions, anything like that, uh, no gifts. But a gift can also be if you go lower than you want to go or if you go lower on a load that you have done before for a certain price so let's say uh, you've done a few loads for like two thousand dollars or one load and they come back to you with the same load and now they say well you know we're paying 1800 now this is a gift to them okay or they're like oh do me a favor you know, I really need to you to do me this favor and then sometime down the road I'll return it to you and, you know, all this talk, okay? They, they might return you a favor, who knows, but most likely no. But if you give them that gift uh, of $200, uh, then the next time they call you, they're going to go with that rate of 1800 and they're going to say, hey, you know, last time you did it for 18 uh, how come now you want 2000 or Or another person from their office is going to call you and they don't know that uh, this guy promised you a favor. They're going to say, hey, you know, this is 18 we did last time. Can you do it again? And you're like, no, 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 it's, it should be 2000 No, well, I see you did it. How come you did it last time for uh, 1800 It worked for you. Now all of a sudden it doesn't work, you know. So if you give them that free gift, then uh, it, it's going to come back and, uh, you know, bite you in your behind. Also doesn't make you look good uh, with your drivers if you, if you keep doing that. Uh, maybe one time if you do it, I don't know, like uh, something out of ordinary, but usually just uh, try not to do it. Don't do, uh, don't give anyone free gifts. Next point is avoid the rookie's regret. Uh, what does that mean? Well, if you are just starting and you say something that you shouldn't have or you booked a load that you shouldn't have, something, you know, you realized later that this is not really a good load, uh, then avoid that regret because uh, it will go into your head, okay? Just go, go with it and uh, say, hey, you know, I made a mistake. Everyone makes mistakes. I learned from my mistake and I will not do it again. I will try not to do the same mistake. Uh, if you go back and call the broker and say, hey, you know, I shouldn't have uh, done it for that price or this load really didn't doesn't work out. I don't know why I booked it. Then it's not going to look good because that broker is going to think uh, less of you or that customer or that person and you're going to think less of yourself as well. Okay, so don't uh, don't uh, do that. And and some people might even uh, repost that load and look for another load. No, don't do it because you don't know if, if that load, uh, the next one is going to be better. Maybe something is going to happen with that load. Maybe it's going to be canceled. Something might, might happen and then you're, you're going to have the double regret. Next point is always avoid quick deals. And this can be put into practice with anything in, in, in the life, any kind of deals. But especially here in dispatching, uh, don't do any quick deals like call, hey, you know, uh, this load, da, 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 I'll take it. Or, or they call you and just, you know, push you, push you and make it, they make it sound like they're in a rush. They make it sound like 
someone else is going to take that load. Uh, don't don't do it too quickly. Uh, you have to have all the facts about the load before you book the load. Uh, you have to ask all the standard questions. Uh, do your miles, uh, do your uh, average per mile, and maybe even uh, investigate a little bit about the shipper and receiver or ask the driver to ask your colleague what they think about it. Uh, but don't uh, rush into anything. These quick decisions uh, usually are not good. Or if you book a load and then later you notice, oh man, well, this is a Sam's Club, you know, and then they're going to stay there for three hours or something else, then it's too late. Then it makes you look bad when you go back and you try to cancel the load. Just take all the facts, take your time, if you ha have time, like we said before, and then uh, book the load and make sure this is a load that you and your driver one. The next thing we want to talk about here is uh, never disclose your bottom price even if it's after the deal. Even uh, after you book the load then you, you say to the broker, hey, you know, something like, hey, well, I would have booked it for less money, for this amount of money. Or even when you book a load where you negotiate and you say, hey, you know, this is my bottom dollar. No, don't do that. They don't need to know that. You can just tell them, hey, this is uh, how much my owner operator wants and this is really what we would like to stick with. Uh, let's say the, the owner operator tells you, uh, well, I will not go uh, under $1,400. And then you go to, back to the broker, hey, you know, like, uh, they said they will not go under 14, so I guess we can book it for 14. No, just tell them, hey, is there any way you could do 16? Or, you know, you don't want to lie and say that the owner operator actually said 16 because they said 14, but you want to uh, make it sound like the 16 is, is the bottom. Like, hey, you know, we really can't go under 16. You know, this is uh, this is our rate. And then they might come back and say, hey, my boss is saying 15 or 14, and then you make it sound like uh, you're struggling, you're negotiating, then you go back, uh, put them on hold, let's say, and like, uh, da, 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 and come back, hey, you know, it just, I mean, I, I have to stay at 15. Is there any way you can do that? You know, do me a favor. And, uh, you know, most likely they will say 15. But if they really have to be at 14, then the 14 it is. Uh, but now you're making it sound like you did them a favor, like you did them a huge favor because you went down $200. And uh, it, it just uh, makes you uh, look better. And maybe when you work in future, then, you know, they will have that in mind that you're an easy person to deal with. Next point here I want to talk about is uh, negotiation is not a battle. Negotiation should be a win to everyone. If you uh, make it sound like a battle, then whoever loses, they're going to, well, whoever loses, they're going to try to get back to the other side eventually, okay? So don't make it sound like you're fighting with someone over the money, like you're winning or like you're the better negotiator or better warrior. Make it sound like a business deal, okay? This is a business deal. We're doing business. We're trying to cover our expenses and make some money. But on the other side, we also want you to make some money too, and we want you to be happy as well. We don't want to uh, belittle you. Uh, next point I want to make here is the harder you push, the stronger they may come back. They uh, might get more resistant if you push for more money. You just push and push and push. And then at the end, they're going to say, well, you know what? Now I don't want to give that to you anyway. Have a nice day. I don't even want to work with you. So don't push too hard. Just be polite and ask for more money, of course, and give them the reasons why uh, you're asking for that. And But make them feel like this is not a war. Uh, make them feel like you are not pushy person who just wants to accomplish what they want and then, you know, celebrate later and stand over someone like that. Next tactic I want to talk about here is uh, to analyze if there is no deal, what will happen to you and what will happen to the broker. Because if you lose the deal, are you going to be able to find a different load or a better load? Are there more loads on the board? Uh, would the owner operator actually agree to the load? After all, if you ask them one more time and explain them the situation, what will happen to you if you don't book the load? Are you going to be able to find another load later in the day or tomorrow? What are the markets over there where the truck is now? And then also, this might be a good negotiation tactic when you analyze what the broker is losing when you bring that to the table and tell them, hey, uh, this is what you're losing if there is no deal, then they might give you 
uh, the Lord, or maybe they can talk to their boss about it. Okay, and then like I said at the end, we're going to talk about more about that. But you present them, you know, like, hey, I, I see there are no trucks in that area tomorrow. Uh, my guy is going to be empty early. We have a good history behind us. Things like that. If you explain to them what they're losing with this deal, then they might change their mind. But like I said, we'll talk about that later. Another one that's very important is never let your numbers speak for themselves. Always tell a story behind that number. If you tell them why you need that much money, you always tell them the story uh, why? Now, you don't have to do it every time you book a load, but if they're really hesitating or if you're really asking for way more and you have a feeling that they might go much, much higher than what they're offering you, then you always uh, tell them a story behind that as to why, why they need to give you more money. Make it sound like you are a good person to work with. At the end, they probably know that you're playing them and they are probably doing the same thing to uh, other people they're talking with, but it just makes it sound better. They feel comfortable working with you. They uh, feel like uh, you're out there telling them how it is. You're not going to be messing around. They will be able to get a hold of you if there is a problem or if you need to do something additional for them, like uh, send them the bill of lading after everything is done or uh, keep them posted, then they will see that you know what you're doing. You have been doing this for a long time. You're experienced and they can trust you with the whole process of booking the load and then after the driver delivers the load. So it, the, the whole process, you will be professional, okay? Uh, next one is avoid mindless haggling. It just doesn't make sense. You're wasting everyone's time. You're wasting your time as well. If you're just haggling with, you know, with no uh, clear point, you don't have a goal. You, like we said before, you didn't calculate how much money you need for this load. You didn't calculate your lowest uh, your, and your ideal price and your asking price. And now you're just going back and forth and speaking mindless things. They give you one price and then you come back and you like 10 times back and forth. Uh, it shouldn't be done uh, that much. The ideal uh, situation at most, you know, three times. Go back and ask and come back. Okay. Next thing we want to talk about is in initial reactions matter. So your reaction matters when they tell you about the load, about their price. Like we said before, if you make a sound or you make it sound like, oh man, you know, why are you doing this to me? Or, or maybe if you come up with something funny, then it will kind of relax the uh, atmosphere. But if you say right away, hey, uh, that's a really good deal, you know, let me talk to my guy, then if even if your guy asks for more, because naturally they're going to, like your guy being the driver, even if they ask for more, because naturally they're going to do it, and you come back to the broker and say, hey, you know, they're asking for more. And then, well, you just said, uh, this is a great price. You agreed on that. And you said, well, now, why, why do they need more? You know, why, you, it's a good price. You're not going to get that price because you said this is a great price. Or, or like, oh, yeah, you know, that might work. Uh, unless, like I said before, unless it's a, a special situation, there is nothing else, you know, it's a good load. Uh, let's just book it and, and be done with it. But if you feel like you can do more, you shouldn't really say that. Uh, let them guess, just say, huh, okay, well, you know, let me see what my uh, driver says. We've seen rates, uh, like you give them like two, three hundred dollars more. We've seen these rates coming out of that area and I've seen the market rates. But let me still talk to the driver. And then while you're talking to the driver, maybe you're not even talking to the driver, then they're going to be like, well, hey, you know, well, let me see about the rates. What, what are they? Are they really paying that much? And now you have more leverage uh, to, when you come back. Uh, next one is uh, understand and respect their constraints. Why might they be rejecting your legit demands? Why are they rejecting it? You, you're just telling them, hey, you know, this is how much money I, I need and it, it's a fair price. But uh, understand why, what's preventing them to give you that price. So if, if it's their boss, if it's their customer, maybe they don't uh, have that much money. Ask, why don't you have more money? Why are you not offering more money? Are you not making enough money on this load? And then, you know, you're going to save yourself time. If, if they really can't go above that, then there is really nothing to talk about. You politely say, hey, you know, 
um, no thank you. If something changes, I'll call you back. But for now, uh, this is just not going to work. So it will save you uh, some time if you know what's preventing them. But if it's something else that's preventing them, then you might be able, if they say, hey, well, my customer really doesn't want to pay uh, this much. I just spoke to them and they're giving me this rate. And then you tell them, hey, well, can you next time or right now call them or email and tell them, you know, like th there are not that many trucks out there. Uh, we have these guys, they're empty now, they can do it for you. Uh, they have a good history. Maybe uh, their customer will make them more money. So if you ask them what their constraint is, uh, then it might uh, work in your favor. Next one is a little tricky. You should make them feel like it's their victory. After you close a deal and uh, everything works fine, don't make them look like this is your victory. Make them feel like they won, like you're giving them this best, great service, uh, best truck, you know, best driver that you have that's always on time, always early. Tell them, uh, make them feel good so that's a good tactic if you want to build a uh, good relationships to make it sound like they want like they're getting something really good out of this deal next thing here i want to talk about is avoid ultimatums and this can come uh, even after the load is booked like the driver wants to leave you know the load is not ready or the driver is asking for something uh, additionally maybe uh, something in that deal in that on that rate confirmation doesn't match to what they previously said and now they're giving you an ultimatum i would ignore those ultimatums because ultimatums are really the last resort and that really shows that someone is desperate because they have no other weapons to use on you they don't have any negotiation tactics left they cannot legally make you do something they know that you're not going to do it and they have no other offers to you or anything else to give you but now they're threatening you they're blackmailing you with something hey you know if you do this we're gonna uh, cut the rate to you know with like two hundred dollars uh, we're gonna do this we're gonna tell everyone we're gonna put you on do not use this no you just ignore that ignore that part when they say ultimate just uh, try to work on that problem and just ignore that ultimatum because it just shows you how desperate they are. And this uh, co brings us to our next point uh, for you that, you know, you shouldn't make any ultimatums too. You shouldn't tell them, hey, you know, my driver is, the, is leaving if this load is not ready. I have done it before. It doesn't really uh, feel well. And it, it's really not a good game tactic because you really don't know how they're going to react. Whatever else they come up with and, 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 you know, they tell you during the negotiation tactics, you kind of know what their next step might be or their uh, next move. But if you give someone an ultimatum, you really don't know. It's a 50-50% chance that uh, either one is going to happen. You better be prepared for both options of what's going to happen before you do that. And then only give an ultimatum if you're really going to follow through that and you exhausted all uh, better alternatives, okay? There's nothing else to do in your weapon arsenal and you are really going to do that if they don't do whatever you're asking them to do and you don't want anyone else to feel that way because they might come back with more weapons on their own and now they are giving you an ultimatum. Next one is don't let negotiations end with a no. When they call you or you call them and you say, them, no, that's not going to happen. No, don't do that. Just say, if something changes, I'll call you back. I'll ask the driver. I will see if I have a, a truck for that or another truck for that. Don't say no because you're closing many doors and you are making yourself look like uh, you are not an easy person to deal with. And not just you, but your company as well and your other drivers might suffer or your other dispatchers uh, might suffer because of what you have done just say hey you know uh, if something changes i have your phone number what's your phone number what's your extension is this the best you can do maybe you know they will come up with more money and uh, you also explain them why you know why you can't do the load if they say this load picks up there and there and delivers at that time this is the commodity this is the price then you just tell them hey you know i can't do this load uh, because it delivers late uh, it's too heavy for this guy it's trash we don't do trash or this money is not enough to cover our expenses and to make some money as well if any of these things changes then uh, we can talk uh, but right now it's just not going to work due to these 
reasons. Another thing is uh, if you book a load and if you don't receive the rate confirmation or something is off, just make sure you follow up. You call them because you wrote down their number and their extension, their name, uh, their email. Uh, just follow up and tell them, hey, do you have the rate confirmation? How's everything going? Just confirm that this is what it is. Even when you book the load and you got all the information and if it's picking up the next, uh, you can always at the end of the day just make sure uh, you email them say you just want to make sure you're good for the load everything is fine you don't want any surprises in the morning that's a good thing to do another one here is always tell the truth no matter what it is just tell them the truth where the driver is how far they are what time they're going to be unloaded or loaded because uh, it will come back to you May maybe it won't but most likely it will and then you're going to get into more lies and you know dig your self deeper down the hole and the driver is going to be hey why did you lie i don't want to lie or the driver is going to be saying something the driver is not going to be answering the fo it's just it puts a lot of stress on you unless you know you really didn't uh, realize that was the case when you booked the load you you didn't understand them correctly and then you only later realize that this is what it is but if they tell you the load is picking up at nine and your driver is delivering at nine you know just tell them i can my driver is delivering at nine how far is he 30 miles when are they going to be empty 10 when can they be there 11 take it a lot of times they will say hey you know you can be there at nine maybe it's not an appointment so always tell the truth no matter what and now we're coming to the uh, next step is uh, give them what you offer what you as a dispatcher your company and your driver can offer. Uh, you don't have to tell them every time this, but you can uh, pick and choose parts that might work in that case, okay? And you can test them. If the broker is hesitating to give you a load or hesitating to give you that price, you can always tell them, I have been doing this for 10 years, and I can tell you that this is all truth that I've been saying so far. I will follow up with your emails with updates when you ask me where the driver is i will uh, send you the rate confirmation driver information right away i will be in contact with you here is my cell phone number too if you need to reach me after hours or on the weekend uh, you can text me you can email me our company we've been there for a long time and you know you don't say things that are not true but you know you you can do some of these you have to find out what makes you stand out as a dispatcher what makes uh, your company stand out out and your driver and even your truck and equipment we've been around for a long time you can say that we don't have violations on our record we don't have any out of service we have a good safety score on our record we have good reviews you can contact uh, our references and they will tell you good things i can even give you more than three references however many you need uh, check our reviews on dat board you will see that we are doing a good a job as a company we have 10 trucks you know if something goes down we can always give you a, a different truck uh, this driver that you're working with has 20 years of experience they are always on time they're never late they're very punctual you know with the paperwork they always report any trouble and you know they always go straight to delivery and they sleep there they don't mess around on truck stops and whatnot or you can tell them hey this is a, a brand new truck that we have things like that that will make you stand out from the crowd and that will also make them want to work with you they're like oh yeah i really i need to work with these guys these guys you know they have it all and just saying that you you should also be able to prove that if they ask you for that but just saying it it will uh, make them feel better and then you can also tell them when it comes to a particular load this load let's say they give you a load picks up at uh, 7 a.m in the morning and you're like well you know this guy he will be empty today at 5 p.m or 6 p.m and they have enough hours left to go straight to your pickup and be there that same night so first thing in the morning when they come to work at that factory or warehouse the driver can uh, pick up right away and they're just gonna straight through to delivery okay so you tell them always like uh, that they're gonna be empty that far that time and they have more than enough time to get there Okay, this driver is very reliable, doesn't mess around, doesn't speed, no, no trouble with police, very kind and polite. When they come to your customer, they're going to uh, talk to them nicely, they're going to be patient and polite, uh, and they're going to represent you 
and us and themselves in the best possible way. So you give them all that so they feel comfortable uh, giving you that load. You also tell them about your history. Our trucking company or, or this trucking company, this owner operator has delivered 200 loads, 1,000 loads safely, no claims on their insurance, not late, uh, all the records that you can give them, all the statistics that tell something about the driver's experience and your experience and worthiness of your company. So this is a really good strategy. Uh, like I said, you can't really do all that, but you always, uh, according to what they need, like if they need someone early, then you tell them about the driver, how the driver is reliable. If they need communication, then you tell them how good of a communicator you are and the driver. If they need uh, something else, you choose the part of what you can give them as a company and a dispatcher that will match their need. And then at the end, I want to talk about uh, some other uh, negotiation tactics that uh, don't have a lot to do with uh, dispatching, but I just want to throw them in as a bonus in here. Okay, so if you want to know more about the deal, uh, you always think about questions you need to ask about. Now we have loads, you can ask them questions about the load, but in particular about the deal. Uh, ask them a lot of questions. The more information you have, uh, the better. And then add even more questions, like uh, uh, some kind of like subcategory, okay? You don't necessarily have to go through all those questions when you ask someone when you're making a deal, uh, but at least have them ready. And maybe you'll go to one of those uh, or two of those questions. Maybe they're very similar. Maybe they will a answer them for you. So you don't have to ask the question, but the more questions you ask, the better. Like, what is the product? Uh, like, we're just going to talk again about uh, uh, dispatching. You know, what's the product? Uh, how many pallets? Uh, how much weight? Is it clean? Is it palletized? Is there any driver assist? Is there, are there any lampers? When you're doing a deal, just ask uh, a lot of questions, okay? The, the more information you have, even like when you're buying a house, uh, when you're buying a car, doing a loan or something like that, the more questions you ask, the, the better uh, picture you will have about that product, about the deal uh, that will uh, make you take the deal or not take the deal. And it will also let them know that you're not kidding around, uh, that you know uh, what you're doing, okay? It's, it's too uh, late. Like if you're uh, doing some kind of a, a big deal, and, and everything is done, and then you're thinking about it for like two, three days or two months, and you're thinking like, oh, I should have asked this. Uh, well, why didn't I ask this? So I wonder why this is not... Well, had you asked, you would have known, and you, you could have avoided something that you didn't like. So whatever you're doing, uh, always ask why. Why are they selling the house? Why are they selling the car? Why are they giving this load to you for such a little price or such a great price? And uh, ask the right questions. Don't ask the questions that don't have uh, nothing to, to do with that deal. So you always, even when you're doing, uh, when you're booking loads, uh, if you can't remember them, write down a list of questions that you uh, absolutely have to ask about the load every time. Or, you know, if they don't tell you, you ask them. But also ask uh, additional, have a list of additional questions that you might be asking if you have enough time or if something is not clear to you. Same with any kind of deal. Uh, ask them, why are they selling the house? You know, why are they selling the car? What are they getting out of and what they're getting into, you know? So it will uh, give you a better picture about the deal. Hopefully this uh, little tutorial helped you. If you have any questions, you have my email. Uh, you can email me. Uh, my name is Ennis. Never stop trucking here. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Come back to my channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.